that? That was just pure pressure. Hello and welcome to Queer Epiphany. Mm, on today's show, it's the musician, designer, and artistic powerhouse, Lava LaRue. Thanks for having me, how are you? Oh baby, so good. I'm very good, but I'm a bit, a bit parched. Yeah, Should we get a baby boo? Mm. Oh, mm. chin chin good. babies. Oh. Mm. Mm. Right. <laughs> I want to know, Lava. What's your quipiphany? My quipiphany was a Tumblr account called FN Iomaly. It's 2010. Oh, we're going back. I'm about 12, 13. Reruns of Skins Generation 3 is on the TV still. Yes. And they've written in this lesbian pop. Uh, it's Naomi and Emily. I go online and log on to a website called Tumblr. And mm -hmm. I come across an account that's all dedicated to sort of like lesbian romances on TV, but specifically the one in Skins. And through it, there's a whole, you know, sway of other accounts that do similar things. This whole kind of can of worms opens of this world of like fan fiction. It was the Tumblr lesbian stan culture, essentially, that made me realise all the different niches within, I guess, different queer communities that I didn't really realise existed. Mm. Just for us MySpace millennial girl. Bebo. <laughs> okay. You learn anything every day. You do, you do. <laughs> Can you explain what Tumblr is for those who don't know? So I think for people who don't know what Tumblr is, it was this multimedia platform where anything goes. Mm. It wasn't based around your looks and who you are. In fact, most accounts were quite anonymous. Yeah. It's literally like if Pinterest and Instagram and then blogs had a baby, basically. But what was more important was capturing like an ideology and a niche, finding your own people. Was the obsession with the actual show or with the content that was coming out of it? I would say the show itself was quite impactful. I definitely felt something when I first watched that like lesbian on screen relationship. But the main impact was the community around it, the fan based community. Mm -hmm. It definitely was a turning point finding other people who were like, oh, I feel the same too. And this is the oh, words I used to identify with that. It gave me the actual language. Camp, I love it. Hey, stand culture. Bow, bow. The thing that I really liked about like the FBI, like Naomi Lee account was that it also had like an anonymous ask thing that like again, like later mm. apps would like get really popular and people would ask that account like relationship advice or things that were, they were going through in school, like I'm closeted and- People could share similar issues. Exactly. So shout out like the fan fiction culture. Right. So it was know. kind of like an online safe space yeah. for you mm. to yeah. Discover who you were by discovering underground subcultures of queerness. For sure. People can out themselves within each other like when they're red. Yeah. So, yeah. I am here, here yeah. I am, hear me mm. So can you set us a scene for when you first found the Tumblr communities that really helped you understand what you were looking for all this yeah. time? I feel like the representation that I had of queerness before I discovered Tumblr was a bit sort of like, it was a very commercial sort of like rainbows and sparkles. And I was a kid who was really into like emo music and I dressed in all black and I dyed my hair funny colors and I didn't understand where that fit. And suddenly I found these sub communities mm. of people where it's like, oh, we're the goth gays. So it was my access to find all these different genres on this mm. platform and then, then it went deeper than that. If I had a crush, I would, you know, look up her Tumblr, what band she was listening to, what TV okay. show she was watching, what kind of clothes she liked, because you would repost all of these things on yeah. your Tumblr. And so it was more sort of like you were creating your own sort of like online identity. I mean, it seems like you've got an awful lot just from Tumblr. For sure. And like beyond it being a queer space, it was kind of like, not to be cheap, it was kind of hot too. Like you'd find stuff there. I heard there was I, all sorts on there was all there sorts was all on there. Tumblr. It was the first time that I saw maybe like sapphic content of, you know, that where it was like made by women for other women yeah. or non gender conforming people. Mm -hmm. Salava. Yeah. If we were to throw you a big party to celebrate your queer epiphany, what would it be like? You got 30 seconds. Go! Ban you! Uh, toilets, Dalston Superstore. Dress codes. Uh, 2007 emo. Theme. 2007 emo. Top guest. You. <gasps> Who would perform? A super group of me, Joan Jett, Willow Smith, and Sarah Paulson from American Horror Story. Oh, oh I effing live. Party anthem. Party rock anthem by LMFAO. Oh you my said god. That. <laughs> Drink. Apple juice. That's time. <laughs> it's gonna be gorgeous. Mm. I mean, I I'm there. Who wants to? Joan Jett's there. We've got LMFAO on the decks. I, like, I don't know why I said that. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. Thirsty <laughs> parched. Thirsty <laughs> parched. Yeah!
Maybe you should start a band and call it Thirsty Parch. Thirsty Parch, it sounds like a good band, yeah. <laughs> so we know how you made best use of Tumblr back in the day. Were you sharing your own content and stuff that you'd made or were you just sharing other people's? It was a mixture of the two. Like, I, it was stuff that I wanted to see more of in like yeah. the community, but I also did like illustrations. It was kind of me expressing things that, you know, I would see problems like online and I would make illustrations that were representative of that. And there was like an illustration that I made and it was just about like, um, censorship over like body image. It says some women feel empowered by nudity, some women feel empowered by modesty, and it's not your place to say which one should empower them. And it went like Tumblr viral. Demi Lovato reposted it, um, Willow Smith reposted it, Harris Jackson reposted it, and then like news outlets like, like, snatched, was, like it snatched it and were like, this is Paris Jackson's opinions on nudity. That um, went super viral, like beyond Tumblr, that was on everything. Yeah, because like Demi like posted it on like their Instagram mm. and yeah it was it was pretty wild for me like you know barely starting A levels at that point. So the Tumblr never existed where do you think you'd be right now? I always wonder if I would have found it on like another internet space. Hopefully I would have found my way to them because we used to have like Tumblr me ups in Camden. Oh, I love. It was really cute and it was a super sort of like very Tumblr internet. Tumblr me up under the bridge. What yeah, happened? it was. <laughs> How do you know that? I know Camden. How did you I know, know Camden, baby. How did you know that? I know. I, feel like I get the yeah. gist. Yeah, you would have walked past. It was the weird kids under the bridge, like playing My Chemical Romance from their speaker. Oh, gotcha. Like, <laughs> put, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Doing was all that was that love? That was love. That was love. Were you there? I come from like Caribbean mixed heritage mm -hmm. and like me even liking alternative things was quite a strange thing and also an acceptance of like queerness also in that community was like an ongoing sort of thing in battles. The thing with alternative kids is you already feel like ousted from society. So you accept the others. Mm -hmm. So I did find a group of kids who were some of the first people to accept like my queerness. So today, if kids wanted to find similar subcultures of queerness and they want to explore online or in real life, what kind of advice would you have for them? In terms of like discovering yourself, it's finding that sort of like moment of that niche of like, I feel represented by this. Mm -hmm. And I feel like where people get swayed is they start dressing or acting well, performing because they think that's the scene they want. Like once you start feeling comfortable in yourself in that niche, you naturally attract people on the same way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> mm -hmm. Do you know what I'll do? I'll just read what it says on the thing. <laughs> How about I just stay on script? That'd be good, wouldn't it? Right, lava baby. I want to slip to the future. Looking into your queer still ball, what do you hope for the future of these amazing communities now that Tumblr is basically extinct? I think it's the online spaces yeah. and like the venues where we met up and having those in real life spaces is the thing that is like inherently such an important foundation just across the queer community yeah. like not even in my weird little internet stand culture yeah, niche worldwide. but like we've seen so many like queer spaces like shut down how cool would it be if there was like a specifically queer goth bar there was accounts that had that vibe that energy that I used to follow surely if we're progressing that's what's gonna yeah. happen find yeah. your people and build those spaces find your people build those spaces yes. and drink lots of apple juice <laughs> right, we like to keep things classy on this show, which is why we're taking a serious moment now to properly honor Lava's Quipiphany. And we'll be inducting it into our biblical book, which we like to call the LGBTQIA, the legendary giant book that queer epiphanies are immortalized in for always. So Lava, would you like to say a few words to give this book, this moment, the gravitas that it deserves? Wait, let me take my hat off, put some respect on it. Oh, oh. Oh. All right, my queer epiphany. First of all, I'd like to thank my old Wi-Fi provider for giving me access to the deep queer parts of Tumblr at the age of 13. Uh, second of all, I'd like to thank the scriptwriter who ever wrote in the lesbian plot and Skins Generation 3, because that was a queer epiphany moment for me. But most of all, I would like to thank the Tumblr account, Effie and Naomi Lee. You are anonymous, wherever you may be. You may be someone I know. You may be Mary Berry. But overall, thank you. That was my queer epiphany. Wow! Oh, that was gold. Just like that all on camera. Sweetie. Thank you so much, Thanks Lava for Baby. Thanks down, gorgeous. Thanks for having me. And you guys, if you need any more info or support on the issues raised on today's show, you can find it on the links that are on your screen right now. Stay gorgeous, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Trust me, babes. Not hitting like and subscribe on all things MTV UK is just not an option. Mm -hmm. You gotta do it right now.